Okay, here we are, my fellow Earthlings. I just finished another painting, and it is actually a small one. Uh, it is another onion, and I think it came out quite nicely. It is built in the usual Rembrandt style. And it's also a Patreon giveaway, so if you want to support my channel, this is what you can get your hands on for only $5 a month. And as you can see, I have done a lot of work with all the different textures and all the different uh, things. I've been working like crazy with this one. It's a sad thing to see because it kind of comes out a little bit too yellowish on the video, but that is probably just something I have to live with. Uh, you also find chapters or hyperlinks or timestamps in description so you can actually jump to your favorite uh, uh, parts. It is uh, partitioned into many parts this video and I talk about painting and how I build it in the different um, layers of paint. This is the onion I was painting so you can see how it is. Uh, yeah. Now, this is also a Patreon giveaway, uh, and I'm now going to just pick a Patreon that will win this painting. And what I do, I just don't look, and I put my, my uh, hand into the jar, and I pick a Patreon, and I do like this. And the winner is Hovard Störe Andresen. Well, I is a lucky winner of one of my paintings. So that's great. Uh, and uh, happy for him. And uh, he's actually, I know him a little bit from before, so that is kind of fun. Uh, thank you for your support. I hope that you, uh, as a patron or as a viewer on YouTube, can do me the fantastic favor and this is so important that you give this video a thumbs up it doesn't cost you anything to do that and that you put on notification bell that you maybe even let it even 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 if you don't want to watch the whole thing just let it roll uh, even if you don't look because it brings up my view time and uh, if you want to be incredibly sweet to me, you can actually go to Patreon and sign up for a dollar or five or whatever. Uh, if you are a person who like me to teach you how to paint, you can uh, do, uh, you can go in for a five dollar Patreon or fifteen. For fifteen, I will actually also do a monthly uh, webcam with you to go through your work and help you as best I can. So. I so put the notification bell on, write in a little comment, tell me what you think. You can even tell me what you would like to see that will help me in my video making. So, with this, I hope to see you in the next video. Hope to see you on Patreon and keep painting, keep living, and keep having fun. That is basically what life is about. So, stay cool until next time. A little thing, a little thing I forgot to mention is that this is actually a Patreon giveaway for October 2019. So I'm a little bit out of whack here when it comes to my giveaways, but I'm gonna do my best to catch up. I'm gonna do up to four a month for the next few months and just catch up. I also have three new ones that I'm working on that is coming out now for December and, uh, no, no, November, December, and one for January 2020 which is coming up rapidly so um, stick with me and you will get your price sooner or later okay stay cool and keep painting okay here we are I am going to paint this onion on uh, this canvas it's going to be a patron giveaway so one of my patrons would get this in his mail when it's done. Usually I paint onions that have more texture in them and stuff, but I found this for some reason quite, quite um, beautiful. So I'm going to try to do that and uh, not make a 10 hour video, but try to get it 
done rapidly so it doesn't start growing and changing and all that stuff. Anyway, I hope you like it and remember thumbs up, leave a comment and tell me what you Okay, here we go. As usual, I'm gonna start with uh, doing a quite rough sketch. I'm gonna measure the onion because I want kind of wants it to be almost natural size. Nah, it comes too much out. Um, and scale it down a little bit. Nip. Nap. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, I'll scale it down. Um, I need to scale it down or it will be quite big won't be too much uh, well it could be cool because it will come the framing is very nice so well I see what happens I'm just gonna start and almost changed my mind here almost stopped making this video and make a bigger canvas I think it's 20.20 20 or 22.22 .22. so it's not that big I'm just going to place no, it's the middle is here so go down here up to there and there's a highlight and that is what I usually do I as you can see the surroundings are already darkened by my my um, raw umbar. I use a raw umbar as a basis. I'm just going to fill, just fill in here and like this. There's not going to be that much texture in it, so it would be a little bit different for me to paint this one, this onion. But as you can see, I just start very rough, and yeah. yeah, I don't really need my glasses now. I hope. Well, maybe a little bit. You see, this one out here, and this one goes up to here. Is. Now the good thing about doing things like this is th that you train your eyes, you really do. You exercise your eyes in seeing shapes. A lot of people start to do things from a photo way too early and they never really seem to, to get the thing with brushwork. It's kind of eludes them, uh, and it's kind of sad because that is where the whole painting thing is about. It is about brushwork. It is about the beauty that appear when you do brushwork. It's about putting your subjective self into a kind of transforming your subjective um, impressions over into the canvas and basically create poetry from that. That's the whole thing. I need to change my palette actually because it's... some of the paint has stiffened sadly. Yeah. I need to put on some more paint. Put 
Hebron's making a noise again. Someday I'm gonna buy that bloody studio. And put this upstairs. Just use it as a use it as a studio or gallery. That was my dream anyway. Well, now as I said, I'm using the the Wurtenberg as basically a guiding rod, as you say. But then again, I do put in more shadows in the background, uh, and I work basically both positive and negative at the same time. So I'm using light to sketch and it works for me, so maybe it works for you if you try it. I like to work directly on the surface, like I, I don't sketch with any charcoal or anything, I just start and I paint. And some dark on that side so I get some, some guidance. And uh, because when we come here, I put the onion on, on some bricks as you can see. I love bricks. Bricks has a lot of textures and a lot of history. I've gone through a lot of treatment by the elements. Wind, water, time. So they usually have very, very nice textures and, and their history, time, is kind of written into the textures and you can actually see the same thing all over nature, as I've been talking about many, many times, you can see it in driftwood, you can see time, you can see the elements, you can see everything, and that is what you should try to put into your paintings. Now if you overpaint and you build textures and you basically try to create, repeat that thing, you know, that nature thing. Um, in the end, you know, paintings will start to feel quite natural because you have brought the laws of nature into it. If you bring your, the laws of nature and one of the greatest, the most important laws of nature is time, the flow of time. So you have a relentless flow, flow of time, entropy as it's called. Uh, and, uh, uh, everything decays, everything changes. And that is what you should try to get into your paintings. And the more you deeper you go, the more of this thing, that this natural thing, your painting will get. So you don't need to rush it. Do the sketch. Okay, you can try and then rapidly create this thing. It's a good thing. Sometimes I have more than one at, set, at one, one you know, still life going, but I noticed that it's best to have fewer, best to have different things to do, maybe a drawing, maybe a bigger still life, maybe like I do my figure paintings that you try to um, try to expand your horizons and 
use different medium and different things. I think that is quite important. So I'm going to show it down here too. So show it going up here. It's very dark. I love this sculptural. I always put light on my objects because I like this sculpt, very sculptural reality of it. I like to push the object into 3D. And for that it's very great. Very nice of gratification to have some really kind of almost too harsh light on it. I do that with my models too. So, you know. Starting to become an onion. See how fast I'm actually doing these sketches. But that is just a sketch. And if I was going to do uh, just stop and do uh, one single go, say that I was going to do an impressionist painting with just one go, I would approach it a little bit, a little. Yeah, with a little bit more care about where I push put every brush stroke. I would care more about what colors I put in the back and and everything. But since I'm going to paint over it anyway, it doesn't really matter. Because this is just the first guiding sketch anyway. And I'm gonna do the whole sketching process for you. So you can see what I'm doing. Uh, then I'm going to put it into like 10 minutes, maybe 5 or 10 minute bursts, uh, so this video doesn't become is extremely long, because uh, I'm pushing, when I'm pushing like 7 hours and 10 hours for a video, like on this size, it's kind of silly. Uh, I think but I mean I use a lot of time on them so if I was going to film every step every step of the way of course it would take a lot more time than this it's so so beautiful to do these things because my, my mind is just my my I told you that a gazillion times before, but for the ones who have seen my videos before, that I'm very hyperactive. I have a typical ADHD brain with hypomania and very, very difficult for me to regu regulate my, my attention and stuff like that. But painting focuses everything. And if there ever was a miracle drug for depression or anxiety for people like me, this would be the miracle drug. Painting, focus, and stuff like that. And it should be used more, I think. Not necessarily just painting, but flow flow itself, connecting with the depth of, of your 
in our being through flow. But the problem with the human human mind or human nature is that we we prefer like other animals, we prefer short bursts. We want it now. We want everything now. We want the best food, regardless how how healthy it is. And we act horribly actually both towards ourselves and our fellow human beings because we are so so prone to short bursts and stuff. So painting, if you get into some creative work or some flow, you will notice that the things, the short uh, short bursts, it's not that important. It's actually at some point it's not important at all. And you can get all that from painting. So or from flow creator work. And just try to go with the flow. You know, try to when you paint it, just don't. It's like. It's like I'm doing the Wim Hof breathing exercises and cold showers and stuff. And the trick is to don't stress. Don't. I don't need to hold my breath until I'm dying every time. Plus, I do like a challenge. So, but same thing with painting. Don't try to be a painter. Just try to be in a moment, in a competition with yourself, not the world. And try to do good works. Every single positive thing, every single positive thing you add to the world is a win. And every th single thing negative, especially if it affects other people directly, even indirectly, is a loss. And is a loss for you, as well as for me. It's lost for everyone, and uh, as I said, there is no amount of money, no amount of girls, no amount of power, no amount of short bursts that would ever make a human being happy in the long run, and that is a bloody fact. There is even research that tells that, but this. This brushworks, seeing that starts to take shape, seeing that something is happening, correcting myself, that is where you want to be. And when you find flow, it doesn't really matter where you are. You can be in prison and you can have a good time if you find your flow, if you find find your inner peace. So yeah. You know life passes by anyway. And most days we basically doesn't even notice that we exist. So And Jordan Peterson says that that we when you add up how much time you are wasting it, it is it is just just when my phone is telling me that I used so so many hours less on the phone last week and I thought the fact did I use five and a half hour a day? 
Can I do six hours a day on my bloody phone? What the hell? That is insane. Think of all the paintings I can paint in that time. It's just weird. And we can't keep on doing that. So, yeah. Think of what I took all that time and put it into my paintings. It will make me happier. It will make me have more money. It will make me a better painter. But no, 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 no. Let's watch some more bullshit. That I don't need to see. So, yeah. Now, it's not much about painting now, but it is about painting. You know what I'm what I'm talking about now? Actually it is about painting. But people don't think it's about painting, but it is about painting. Because life and uh, flow and uh, doing good works and thinking it's the same as painting it's, it's kind of a, the brushwork of life okay it's very strong reddish down there Okay. Some green over there. It's kind of grunsk. It's kind of algae or something that has grown on it and then it has dried. And then it reflects the colors in onion so you get kind of Link those a little, little bit together. Yeah. This one is actually over here. I think this is going to be quite nice at some point. Hopefully. This one has to be a little bit higher, or I can make the onion a little bit, yeah. So let's see what I'm doing. This one I painted too big. And when I see I've done mistakes, I just start to correct them with paint. And just do it like this. And that way, I kind of mix, people ask me if I mix colors on a palette, and not really. Or maybe I do, but I don't notice that much, because most of my corrections are actually happening on the canvas. And um, uh, I mix a lot of paint on, on the canvas, like I'm doing now, I'm kind of dragging these colors together. And... But it's a very intuitive process and I think you have to paint for a few years before you will be able to pick it up kind of fast like I do. I can see it's almost like my brain just picks up colors intuitively very fast. And I remember a time when it was slower. And it's all about, as I said before in other videos, it's all about getting to a level of skill where you start to foresee the future. And, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. 
Bu da nice olur lan. Boş time dedim yüz. 25 minutes. That's not so bad. That was the first sketch. 25 minutes. Then I will do another segment where I kind of touch it up. I need to fill up my pen. I have my pencil doesn't have that much good paint on it actually. So I just need to get some better paint into it. Then I'll start to mold these details. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. This one is actually and. And they're all, this one's higher, way up here, up here I think, and this one, and this one is quite cool. And you can do all kinds of directions, and yeah. Just get it right, you know. You know. I don't want so much texture here because the main texture has to be there. And that too, you have to plan where you put textures. So they don't collide with one another later. You can also scrape it down. I've been doing that too. So there's a lot of things you can do actually. Just have to. Okay, there's a leaf down there, and there's one here, and like this. I think I'm almost done because this camera stops after half an hour. It's probably a good thing. I'm gonna paint it for. Maybe I should make some 10 hour videos just for fun. Full course, 10 hours, every video. <laughs> you know, you grab people crazy. Listening to me say the same things over and over and over. Okay, I need to get some better paint on my palette. I thought it wasn't dry, but it was. As you can see, all these colors are just, these are kind of dry. And uh, I need to clean it up. So, this was the first 25 minutes, maybe half an hour. And yeah, 29, 15, 16, 17, 18. I'm gonna focus a little bit so you can see. What came out? Yep. Ogi rogi rogi. See you in the next. Okay, there we have another palette ready to do the next stage or finish the first stage. It depends how you look at it. Uh, maybe I need some better pencils. Yes.
Let's sort them out with a good plan to have a good pencil. So we can paint properly. Your canvas. I'm not good taking care of my my pencils. That is a problem with me. I can't forget to wash them and I forget stuff like that. And it cost me a lot of money actually. So stupid. Hmm. And I have to find new ones. In the time. Good. Also like these round pencils actually, but it's more for impressionist work. You know the thing. Now I twisted around the palette. Usually, it kind of goes from the light here uh, and to the dark, but this one goes from the light to the dark. So it's like putting my my uh, piano on um, its head well it's kind of this a little bit of the same process it's also good for the brain to change it a little bit but it's the same rhythm it's the same uh, I don't mix up the different colors all over the place because that would be a problem. Your brain has to become used to to a certain pattern because to get into that deeper flow as I was talking about earlier to get into that deeper flow you have to be able to foresee stuff. You can't stop and keep wondering. Um, that is also a problem when I'm I'm actually making videos and painting like this. It is harder to, for me to get into the deeper layers of flow. But then again, when I sketch like this, it's not, not the most difficult, as you can see. For me, this is a quite easy process. And I don't take much care to make it perfect or anything like that so but when you go deeper when you go into deep 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 detail then you just have to shut off the brain you can't talk it's basically like almost like trying to talk and write at the same time it's a little bit difficult that is why you notice sometimes when I make my video or paint I just go dead silence for a while and um, go into a flow see I'm going to put in some colors into this I'm actually going to make a video where I paint one of my palettes just going to hang it up I'm going to paint the palette on a painting when while I explain what colors I use to the different to the different types, you know, the sky, earth and everything. Because I get some questions about you know, they ask what skin tone and stuff like that. And there aren't no such thing in my view in my opinion. <clears throat> there are no such thing as skin tone. There is no such thing as onion tone. There are tones that onions have, usually have, and it's kind of in the more orange, reddish realm. Um, but every onion is different. Uh, and uh, you just have to keep looking keep observing and paint what you see mm. Mm. I 
was actually watching the Starship launch just now, but it stopped it and lost. <laughs> it's so funny, it stopped it exactly when it ignited the machines and and uh, yeah. I mean, if there was one good reason to stick around in life, if sometimes it is hard to kind of find out, find why, why should I care, why should I bother existing at all, because I will kind of hit the wall in a hundred you know, hours anyway, like Chris Vagens, um, which was a stark reminder that even even the greatest die. I read meditations of Marcus Aurelius or Seneca, some of these great philosophers, talks a lot about death. Memento mori. Remember you will die. And you can become kind of like melancholy, thinking like that. And ask yourself what is actually the point, especially if you have some struggles and right now I have a lot of struggles so and but I'm kind of sad and happy at the same time uh, the reason why I have struggles is because I have fucked up done things that I should have done and, uh, things have consequences let it be said I haven't hurt anyone that is very important I'm not that kind of a person or I have kind of screwed up my life in many ways, so... But then again, it made me a better person, and... You just have to... You know, it is when you... When you... When you come to a point where... Things really, really, really fall apart for you. Uh, that is when you get tested. I always thought I was a strong person. And uh, it is when you hit the wall and you have to basically just keep hanging on this, this uh, uh, small branch. You know, in, in uh, Buddhism, there's a story. There's a man who's chased by his tiger. And to avoid being eaten by the tiger, he jumps into a well. But he grabs this branch and he holds on because he can't actually go down to the bottom because there's a poisonous snake down there. And he has to, he could give up and just let go because the situation just seems totally hopeless. Or he can hold on and hope that something changes. And for him, suddenly he looks up and there's some honey. He's hungry and there's some honey that drips into his mouth and and gets fed a little bit and. After a while, the tiger is leaning, kind of leaning over the well too much. So it falls into the well and he falls on the snake and he kills the snake. And then there's another branch that um, is growing out on the side of the well. And he grabs that with both his hands, and now he has both his hands, which, of course, ups the odds for survival. And he managed to climb out of the well. So things look, look very hopeless, but he just stuck around and he didn't give up, and he survived. And I think that is the way you have to think when when you are in a 
tight spot. And you know, all the things that is negative, all the thing, all the struggles, that's actually what you learn from. You don't learn anything from having everything being great. There is nothing to learn be learned from that. Um, having the kind of personality that I have, that is the way I learn. So now there are something bright light behind here. It's an onion, so it has this onion crispy thing and the light is actually shining behind and hitting here so that can actually explain some of the shape in the foreground like this and it also goes out like this It's funny how this is basically equally interesting every time. It, it, it never fails to, to be interesting. I never get tired of sketching. I never get tired of painting. It's like I told my mother yesterday, because she's always concerned that I paint too much and get tired and kind of burning myself out. But it's never been painting that burned me out. It's always been that I didn't paint that burned me out. Or did the wrong choices. It could be the spending money, it could be anything. Wrong people, wrong girls. Not the, the girl's fault, it's of course mine. Or many things that burn me out. But it's never been, I've been training too much, as I've been saying in many videos. I had a double hip replacement in, in 2019, and I did still have some building up to do because I screwed up that too, been with too much training, too much. I mean, you don't have sex five days after a hip replacement. It's just ridiculous. It was a an anterior or front. I think it was anterior. It was a front operation. So the front operation um, was way more. Um, My, the muscles, there were no cutting into the muscles, so I felt great. But of course, when you cut off the bone, and you slam in metal, you might not have sex for a few weeks. But no. I got a, what do you call it, I got a suggestion I couldn't say no to and I got some complications. I also did train too much which made of course that was actually the, the tip of the iceberg when I went and did squats after three weeks, two weeks. And um, yeah, so I screwed up. That is the way I am. But that also leads to this amazing capability of positive things when I when I do like the things I've been interesting in, interested in, I always managed to become quite quite good at it. Like when I did boxing, karate, taekwondo, I'm good at taking in a lot of information because I love information. I um, 
for I thought myself to I thought myself to paint because I'm interested in it. So I'm able to when I put this into something positive it really pays off. And um, yeah. Do you think it's getting better now? The problem here when I paint is when to stop. Yeah. I shouldn't tell my life story in every video because this wasn't supposed to be that kind of video. But you know what I mean, you have to, I mean, if you're going to, to bring things to a higher level, if you're going to become a better painter, a better human being, I'm sorry, you have to fall. You have to fall several times. You have to fall and fall and fall. Uh, that is what turns on the deeper introspection, that you actually do mistakes and you just have to deal with them. I've been a big baby for a very long time and relying on uh, very sweet parents that has kind of helped this big baby but in the end parents will not last forever and at some point you just have to grow the fuck up you know? So, anyway, so I think it starts to look like an onion. You see what I'm doing? I'm going kind of first, I did like this, then I do like this, and then I will do like this again. And a lot of stuff. It's a very nice light coming on the side there. Oh, it's making noise here. It's too noisy, man. Now there's some yellowish up there. I'm actually using quite clean colors many times. That is why my paintings tend to become a little bit too vivid. But it is my way. So you can like it or you can hate it. I guess the people who likes it watch my videos. It's not that many, but it's kind of slowly growing. It's very hard to get an audience now on YouTube. I did have a bigger audience, and it's really started to to take off. But then. My channel was hacked, destroyed. It was just bloody well sad, the whole thing. And, uh, 220 was a horrible year. And, uh, but also the year I learned the most about myself, ever. So maybe it was the best year of my life. That is how I should see it, you know, that is the best, you know, when you really, really, really face yourself, and you really, really, really have to start fighting, 
Maybe that is the best year of your life. It's kind of a year that you would have loved to be without. It would be another person if things didn't happen. But then again, you wouldn't be the one you are now. It's almost like people that get cancer and suddenly realize that they haven't lived. And that is really sad, especially if you die, because then you can't fix it, you can't get a redo. Marcus Aurelius tell that, say that, that every morning when you wake up, picture yourself being dead, now take the rest of your life and do the things you would have done if you were alive. That's a very, very good way to look at it. I mean, I love that. See, sketch this sketch, and I'll put in some more dark here. It became an onion, didn't it? Onion on a brick. After this, I'm going to do some portrait paintings. Let's, let's do this here. Hmm. So annoying. So dampen this down, because then you see the light comes here. Twenty four. That was one hour, basically. Me ranting about life again. Or I need this one to be more like this. And
should be able to paint four of these every month. Be one a week. So why don't I? Doesn't take that much time. Do you know why? Because I'm spending six hours on my fucking phone. Stop doing that. You can't live life on Instagram. You have to live life here, now, in the moment, memento mori. Oops. As you can see, it's a very rough sketch. And that's the whole point. Rough, now I can let it dry. Next time I start to enhance all the things. And boom. We'll be good. What's always very difficult is underneath the shadows or the stands on. Well, it's always a problem for me to getting that right. It doesn't, every single time I'm struggling with the same things. <laughs> it's so funny. I mean, we should have been become better now, you know. But it kind of eludes me. Because I, I'm I'm painting very sculptural and uh, I like it to become very 3D. So to get that to happen you have to go the night watch crazy. You just have to go all the way, as Charles Bukowski says, go all the way, all the way in. comes over like this. It's probably higher up. And there is shadow underneath here. Yeah. There's a touch of white here. Because that was on top, this is under. And this one, and better. Anyway, I think I want to close down the sketching process, let it dry. Okay, another day, another layer. Uh, I'm going to do, I uh, have a different uh, retouche fannies. Now, I didn't get the old horn one, but it doesn't matter. So I'm going to do this once, a glaze and a retouche fannies. As you can see, uh, when I put on the retouche fannies, uh, you get all the shadows and everything kind of pops out. And I will do one glaze, this retouche fannies, and one glaze in this tutorial. Uh, so listen carefully. Now this have to dry for a few minutes and then I will do my glaze and then I will start painting. So, 
So, here we are, I tried for a little while and I'm going to do my usual glaze, it is just a, a, I use my medium which is 70% turp, turpentine and uh, it is 30% linseed oil and I just put in some craplac and some um, French ultramarine usually and I just go over it like this just to shake it up a little bit it's not really a glaze, it's more like a I don't know what to call it but I like to shake it up a little bit from the from the sketch to um, because, and also I get some oil into the painting at the same time uh, I don't mix much uh, oil into my colors now this becomes a little bit sticky after a while because of the retouche vernis so uh, yeah So, okay, now I can see, maybe you can see some of the uh, pictures is coming better out. And it's like the, the colors are kind of adding themselves into the, into the, uh, maybe I should, yeah, into the small te textures in a way in, in the last painting layers. Let's work it down a little bit like this. Um, so brutal. I also remove some of the oil because I don't want it to be too oily. So that is how I do it. And then I will start to paint. And this has kind of been pulled into the paint a little bit. So. Okay, ready to rumble in the jungle, I guess. So I just need to have some nice pencils to work with. And it's layer number two. So what I do is that I start with um, the light areas first. It's, it's uh, the best way for me to do it is actually just to place one uh, point of light I just place that point of light here and here it's basically almost where it's going to be, it's like in this region and then I just start working from there uh, it's, I, I do follow the same plan all the time uh, I've seen people who do photorealism is very much more uh, careful with how they approach it they, uh, Because very gradually, very controlled, but that is not me. I, I don't care about that. It doesn't have to be perfect. I want it to be painted. I want it to come alive as a painting. Um, and uh, 
There is nothing photorealistic with the Rembrandt's painting, despite they are being incredibly alive. That's because of the textures and the, the different colors are kind of battling uh, with one another on the surface. And I find that to be what's most fascinating with painting in the first place. So, yeah. <clears throat> So, I will try to keep this um, a little bit painted so that I, I don't want it to become another nemesis. I also want to paint it before it starts growing because if it starts growing I will start adding. Uh, it's typical me, I just can't stop. I need to get everything in. So, basically, need to get this done while I have time. It's horrible. Dirty glasses. <clears throat> Some days I need glasses. Some days I don't. And I can see there's a correlation between fasting and uh, no glasses. No sugar, no glasses. Eat sugar, and I need glasses. I mean sugar, I mean carbs. And uh, yesterday I actually had a cheat day, and I had a pizza. That was of course full of carbs. And because of that, I am today a little bit insulin resisted. I think, and that affects my eyesight. So if you want to keep your eyesight for a very long time, make sure not to screw around with your blood sugar, because that, I think that is one of the reasons why I got a little bit um, uh, long-sighted, as it's called in Norway. And it's quite annoying because when I look at uh, when I look at the motif over there, it is totally clear to me. And when I look at the painting from here, it's kind of stuck. It's like I have to go all the way out here for it not to be a little bit blurry. It's really disturbing. It slows down the process a little bit because you have to look through these glasses all the time and it's so annoying. So take care of your eyesight, eat your greens, get your vitamin A, get your eggs, some protein called choline or something that protects the eyes from generation, <coughs> degeneration. So do that. That is my advice to my fellow Artists and Erkings. So, yeah. Also, my palette will be a little bit blurry if I don't wear my glasses. A bad day. As you can see here, I'm working now in directions different directions, trying to follow the shape, I try to follow the shape, I try to build the shape as it is in reality. I try to feel the sculptural, sh sculptural shape of the object and then follow the different um, ways directions see here uh, it's kind of a micro micro impressionism
up here. This leaves are here. I think if it starts to grow, I'm just gonna stick with the first thing. Maybe that's the better plan. That they'll start to change things. The trick is to put in thick colors in the bright areas. People, the thing with me, I'm not a careful painter. And that is also a problem because uh, my ambitions is to get things right. And uh, it is a problem because there's a conflict between the expressionist and the control freak in my brain all the time. That is in every aspect of my life actually. I try to control my weight, I try to control my looks, I try to control everything but then I keep losing control because my brain is just not made for control. Uh, and it's a really frustrating state of being in many ways. And the same thing goes for the painting. I really, 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 really try to control it but then I lose control and it can be very frustrating and can be quite tough so yeah that is how it is Behind there, I'm always using what's behind the object as a way to explain what's in front. Um, it's a very good way to. That is exactly what Rembrandt did. I, I tend to overdo it. And there it comes in again. I, I tend to overdo everything. Uh, Try to build as much as I can so that uh, you get that feeling of things coming out. So I really put in thick layers behind here to kind of push it. But then you mustn't, then you, of course, I'm going to do several layers. So this is just a groundwork basically for. Uh, What's underneath? Oh, what I put there will be underneath. But it can. The the thing is that it does actually. Basically, despite that you paint over it, it kind of shines through. And creates tension and textures and and things. Kind of beautiful. I think it's beautiful. doing still life so when, when people ask me if I can teach them to paint the first thing I tell them is to start doing still lives start doing uh, picture paintings of yourself in a mirror do some self portraits it's so important to understand the need to exercise your mind and people say, oh well that is so boring, I want to paint paintings, that they want to do paintings with great ideas and blah blah blah. Well, 
If you want to be a philosopher, write a book, okay? Uh, write your memoirs or something. If you want to learn how to paint, you have to paint and you have to train your eyes. Of course you can do both. You can do both philosopher, philosophy stuff and you can do political paintings, but it also comes down to to the painting process. That is what it comes down to. That is where you have to put in your focus. Because you won't become a better painter just because you think you have some good ideas. That you won't be able to finish anyway because you're not a good enough painter. And of course my teachers in art school said this to me. And, uh, but I did both and uh, they only wanted me to focus on process and they wanted me to focus more on um, the artsy thing, you know, the motif or the idea than the paint and for me that was just a non-starter, I wanted to be a painter I really don't even care that much about being an artist. I mean, being an artist, you know, they call it artworks, but actually it is more art as a works of art. Because Achte comes from, from the capability of having a skill or doing something skillful. That is where the work of art, the work of creation, the work of, of um, creating things that are difficult. That is the original meaning of the word. And if you look at conceptual art, there is not much left of that. So, yeah. Do one more brushwork. And then I'm going to paint for a while. And then I'm going to show you how it turned out today. Because, as I said, I don't want this to become a 50 hour video. So, yeah. Okay, and that is how I start with After the Glaze. And I just keep on building. You get it. Okay, been working for a while, and uh, I'm just toning, toned the surroundings a little bit, and done some work around. Um, it's not much you can do on the second layer actually, unless you are going in for an for a impressionist version of it, but that is not what I'm after, so <coughs> I just need to tone things around. The problem is sometimes things get a little bit too hard in the background. Maybe it kind of disappears in the wrong way. So there are different things has to think about. <coughs> We're doing the Wim Hof breathing techniques lately a lot. I can feel that I maybe need a break. Just go kind of back and forth like this. Then I can put in some brushwork down like this. And that's how the way I get my textures. I, I kind of just let them basically paint over and over. And I start seeing the different directions and stuff. And that is how it is.
this a brick here. See how to move this one up a little bit. And almost stuff like that you, you see after a while, especially when you get to the second layer, third layer. As you go along, you just see the different things you have to do. Uh -huh. Okay, this one has a little more. It's difficult. It's always the thing, you know, underneath here. It's always difficult. But right now I'm just going to let it melt into one another and um, So, Maybe. Let's see if I can find the so small enough. Yeah, there's some light here, and the camera shines through underneath. So underneath there, it will be very red because the, the light is kind of shining through the whole thing so it kind of comes underneath there you get this very warm orange hue and as a of course then as a complementary color you get more greenish in here to compensate for that that is the laws of nature when it comes to colors. The complementary colors, but also the secondary colors, which, the sh which is the shadows and the dark places. It's, uh, yeah.
I wonder how many onion paintings I've painted and not a single time I've actually felt totally satisfied with it because it's just kind of a, uh, I really struggle with these things at this point it's okay because it's still quite sketchy then as I progress into more detail it becomes oh, just so rough shape underneath there. This actually goes all the way down like this. I'm going to turn into a mush here now, very often do, but that's how it is. That is the thing when you tear down the sketch, very often just the second layer just becomes a bloody chaos and you feel like you have lost everything. And um, that is just a 
then you have to go through. Okay, I'm going to paint a little bit more on it and then I will quit and let it dry. I have to turn around that first. We're going with some greenish because there's some green in that. There is some um, kind of mushroom algae type of thing because that is dried up and it gives it kind of a greenish tone which then goes over to more reddish hair and hair is very bright actually. This is a mush now. But it's kind of expected. I just have to paint on it basically every day so it doesn't change too much. And there's very bright red hair in my eyes, anyway. And here is a shadow coming down. I think I painted this one too high. Yeah, saw so that now actually. This one has to come down all the way down here at least. There are sorts of things you suddenly just realize, do some mistakes, and suddenly you just see them. The way I saw that was because there was some dark behind there. And when I looked, I could see that I painted this too high, and um, there's going to be <coughs> some behind. This one is actually higher up. Up 
do here as it was and do it like this to put in some more white, some more lights here because the light hits this one right now it's very it's very wet so it has problems actually picking up the colors and that is when you should actually quit because if not it's just going to turn into a as I say a mush a big lump of too many colors on top of one another and nothing really has any address anymore an address is very important I actually interpret this one much bigger than it was it's very typical because an object in the painting is kind of popping out because of the light and my brain said, yay, I have to paint this one big. But in reality, it isn't that big. Okay, I think that will be enough on the video for now. 20 minutes! Whoa! Well, it was progress of a kind, I guess. So, okay, I'm gonna put on our tiny glaze. And uh, also I did the uh, retouche vanis, as it's called. So I'm just going to put on a uh, uh, very light glaze with my cut black and stuff. And uh, I'm going to keep. Ah, oh, this became a little bit. It's actually good that it's in the blue now because I have. Actually, done it a little bit more yellow, so it's good to get some, some uh, uh, green. Now, when I put blue over there, of course, it becomes greenish. Here is the textures, and get all the, the different brushwork popping out. Rembrandt style. This is the beauty of Rembrandt. If you if you look at Rembrandt's paintings, you can see all these beautiful brushwork and textures. Sadly, it seems to disappear on the video here. I'm just gonna.
try to focus if you can see now how how it just kind of pops out it's basically the same effect as you see in the in the Rembrandt uh, paintings with the cloth and uh, the Jewish bride is a very good example I actually copied that once many years ago into a big painting and I actually plan to do some um, some copies of um, Rembrandt paintings, self-portraits and stuff just to and then basically talk about my view of how he was thinking as a painter now that is of course my subjective view is basically what I can see in his paintings uh, from my own experience with the understanding of brushwork and texture it's really important to and basically brushwork and texture is the painting and uh, that is very important um, so it doesn't really matter if you paint low textures or high if you if you use a lot of um, like I use very thick colors but you can do the same with thinner colors I guess but then you won't get that sculptural thing but you will still get all these small things like the brushwork and stuff uh, just on a different level so they will be more invisible in a way uh, for me it's more like uh, I just love seeing how these textures and stuff pop out when I glaze and you can see my, my brushes. Now I'm going to do a lot of detail today. So I want to, you see now, because now I can actually put on basically clean colors and it mixes in with a, with a bluish if I put on some reddish then it becomes violet if I put on some some yellow it becomes more of course more uh, green so yeah that is how I love to do it Let's see if I can get some reddish here if that is see now I've got the reddish on here turn more into the realm of the reddish and I uh, can actually take some yellow, no blue I mean and then it turns green and this is how I can actually manipulate the colors on the on the canvas and I really enjoy that that is my thing that is my piece that is my basically my everything so yeah if I couldn't do this I really don't know what what I should live for not right now anyway so okay and this this onion is quite it's not so much texture and stuff in it's quite, quite actually I've put on more, way more texture into it than it's actually there so um, of course I have to but that is to to get that sculptural thing that I'm after so uh, yeah. It goes into the orange or reddish on the hair. So I'm using a different pencil today, a round one. I actually like these round pencils too. Um, yeah. And now I just drag like this and I drag the colors together. And sort of one more green there. Like this, 
And that is how I go back and forth and back and forth until I basically manage to, to get it right. I'm so tired of this COVID thing now. It's, it's kind of isolating. It was for way too long. This is such a gratification. I just enjoy it so much. You know, it's hard to 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 actually explain how much I enjoy the painting process. See, I could. Some people would go down like this. But it is not, that's not right. It doesn't go down. It maybe feel like that, but if you want that curvature, you have to combine them. You have to go this way, and that way, and this way, and that way. Because to build, a, if you only go one way with the textures, you will get a surface that is very, kind of, like ice. It's very uh, glut or, or it doesn't have any textures, any anything happening in it. So, to get a more lively surface, even if you create something that is so uh, glass-like as this, now, now I can actually go in and I can add some kind of these uh, or these. Uh, onion things like take a pencil like this and I can add in uh, see now now you have these stripes going down and it actually they follow the shape like this I also dig into the wet paint now so when I make these now, after the paint is wet, they actually get more natural because there will be a, there will be a, a genuine 3D effect. So yeah, here. Like this, and then I can do it. So that is the thing. Then I go in here, my house that, and that is how I actually build different textures and the onion feeling. much you may ask why how do I paint onions over and over and over and over but it is basically because it is a challenge every time every time I do it the challenge is basically the same and uh, hopefully at some point in the future I will actually feel that I hit the jackpot see here like this and then uh, some lights here from here. Now I want to keep it down here. You don't want any textures so much in here. Just want to keep that down. Yeah. I want the things to be in a more 
in the um, very bright areas and here I will build a highlight thick so kind of the first thing that hits the eye when you look at it is these points of light and these points of light has to be very focused after a while I have to focus them because if they are too big they will actually just if you use too much white it will kill the whole thing so uh, you have to be careful with that now see here do like this again add thick, very thick colors here it kind of sticks out of the surface because this is the brightest area and that is exactly what you will see when you look at Rembrandt's paintings thick layers how he just pushed it so and that is where I, I, I think that is where the combination of him using basically the the color circle before it was even invented intuitively we understood what kind of colors that would kind of push the shape and, uh, and yeah. there underneath here there's more bright reddish you see how it kind of starts to kind of come alive then I can put in some guidance by adding some uh, here's some spots of light also some textures and we have them here also behind here be careful you don't want to be too, too thick or too much be exactly enough without destroying it. So. I should actually try to get every segment of my painting tutorials to be basically about this uh, and uh, at least mostly. And now I can actually rant off and talk about life and everything in every bloody video. And that is just me thinking, because I'm thinking about these things all the time. So maybe some of you like to hear my thoughts. It's my, it's my philosophy. It is my voice that is coming out when I paint. And since I'm making very long tutorials, You might pick something up. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? So now, this orange, like this, and there's some here. It's too much. I have to use now. Since there's very reddish there, I can have it red here, so I'll push that down into the more blue. And I'll kind of drag this up by doing like this. So now I did two different textures, one there and one there. And suddenly they get their own. Uh, their own function and uh, yeah there's also a shadow here to work with there's also more white up here I can see so first I will go, first I do 
like this. Okay. And then I will go in. And I try to go the other way. Maybe on top. Light. So I don't mess up. And yeah. In the end. Might work out. This is even more white here. And that one's one down here. Yeah, that shadow was very beautiful. You know, that's kind of a Rembrandt type of shadow. I talk a lot about Rembrandt because he's extremely uh, important for how I think and also Vermeer and Turner when you look at the textures but I've probably said that a gazillion times before and I'll probably say it a gazillion times more because that is how I am I repeat myself and so do you every human being keep repeating themselves from dawn to dusk until the grave that is the only thing you can do and then slowly evolve as a person changing your mind, getting new information stuff like that but you will never be able to stop repeating yourself and you shouldn't be ashamed of that you know every time you repeat yourself it is like reading a book for a second time and if it's a good book you will always uh, find new important things or you can say it's like writing a book you write a text this text is good but then you go back and you change it a little bit you say basically the same thing but you change it, you make it better you make it deeper make your understanding of it deeper so repeating what you say over and over again is a way of learning and I have to say I learn a lot of hearing myself talk about painting it becomes more and more conscious for me what I'm doing so while I'm talking to you I'm actually learning too and I'm getting better to articulate these things every time I do and of course I also get better in English so I have to imagine that somebody's listening and I guess when I posted it someone will listen and you are the one I'm talking to Mr. whatever your name is or Mrs. whatever your name is I hope you learned something from it and I hope you give a thumbs up leave a comment and share it with your friends because then I will make more videos because you tell me and you tell the algorithm that you find my content interesting it's very important I have no idea how important that is. Now, that shadow now became, of course, a little bit too bright. And, of course, I will tone it down. There's two ways I can do that. I can wait until it has actually dried. And I can glaze over it. With a only glaze. Or I can push it down with color. And I choose to do the latter right now anyway because I'm gonna probably paint over it a few times before I'm done anyway so it doesn't really matter and I need this one to also become brighter you see now how that shadow just starts popping up a little bit more yellow here 
and they are essentially just there, a little bit more yellow. Like that. Now there's kind of a hole there now. Something like this. Push it up a little bit. Yeah! I hope you got something out of it. And now I'll just keep on painting for a while and I will come back to you later. Like this, but that is the most bright part. And it's kind of like I have a, a kind of a light bulb there. It sense and this thing is actually reflecting that that light. So around this there will be a little bit more darker when I'm keep on painting. I see there are more greenish in there too. And blue. So to get this to kind of pop out, the surroundings has to be uh, deeper. But that is maybe the next layer or the next layer. So for now, this will do. Hope you got something out of it. Just zoom a little bit. See how it became. Yes, it's a good start. So see you. Yay, another layer. Not another layer, just more continuous painting. I uh, see I have gotten in a little bit more details, so getting things into where I want it. Now, this is always very problematic. It's kind of getting that line, not line actually, uh, getting this without actually making a line, getting a natural shape, natural, uh, well, kind of glides into the background. And sometimes I just forget words, it's so annoying, probably my age, I'm going Sina. You know there are people in my age that actually start going to see now. And it's so sad, you know, it's the worst thing. Just think about that. You used your whole life to create this personality. At least some of us have we done that. And then you come to a certain point when you have the most you have them basically the most uh, How the hell could I forget that word? You see what I mean? Erfaring in Norway? Well, the most experience, yeah, I guess experience is the word. word. Uh, and then your brain starts to die. And you basically lose you basically lose your mind, you basically lose your personality and that is very sad so it's very important to keep a healthy mind and how do you keep a healthy mind? well, you exercise and you take care of it as I age I have to concentrate about that even more because I wanna I wanna spend my life becoming a better painter Better and better and better and better. And, um, and then I will drop at some point, and that's fine. That is just how it is. There is basically nothing I can do with that. So the thing is that no matter how long you live, there's actually a funny video on YouTube 
and that I found. Um, there's this guy who can't die, and of course he tries so many times to kill himself. And you see civilization come and go, and you see humanity die out, and at some point he's kind of floating around in in um, uh, in space where there are no matter left because even the universe will actually go to absolute zero but then new universes will basically pop up but no matter how long you live no matter how long you can stretch it you will cease to exist at some point and uh, just have to get used to that thought. Um, so, but this is what I'm going to do while I'm waiting for that last moment. Like Christopher Hitchens, my late hero Christopher Hitchens did say that he hoped that he could die in the lucid or die so he could actually experience his own demise since he hadn't been around basically for experiencing his own birth. But with esophageal cancer and the outlook for the kind of death you could get from esophageal cancer, he kind of thought it was maybe not such a good idea after all and uh, he avoided that because he went into a coma and then he died from the cancer or pneumonia to be and it actually comes from stoicism this notion that you should be around in your the last moments of your existence uh, to experience everything but then again when you're gone it doesn't really matter and it's so sad actually existence is a paradox because I'm standing here doing this work on this onion and in some time maybe 50 years if I'm lucky if I can get to 100 I'm going to be gone. It's not going to, I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to experience this. And it's very strange. It's hard to get used to actually. Because we are so self-absorbed. We are so self-absorbed that we actually created religions to take away this, this feeling or understanding of shortness of life as Seneca to write about in his book the shortness of life uh, yeah it's funny really we struggle we struggle with living Out, as you said in the movie, by a vulgar little tumor. <laughs> anyway, I think it's it would be very hard to know that you could never, never die. But then again, you want to live. Anyway, in the meantime, I'm going to distract myself as good as I can by doing these things, things I love, which is painting right now, is just basically the thing I have. My daughter, parents still, but they're not going to last forever. It's going to be hard losing them. Oh. Okay.
Okay. So what do you think? You see what I'm doing now? I'm now down to the more detailed work. I'm kind of concentrating more. I'm adding more in kind of the uh, slow pace. Um, I'm just going to enhance things. Then I'm going to let it dry. And then I'm going to do maybe one or two more overpaints. This is actually a patron giveaway, so some lucky patron will get this painting. So yeah. It's so it's kind of nice to build this. It's not that I'm paint I'm gonna do a painting of a brick, a bigger one, because I haven't actually done a real brick for YouTube. So I'm gonna do that. It's gonna be funny. It's gonna be nice. Hopefully. I can see that I'm actually getting better painting despite painting sometimes you can actually go a couple of days or maybe me not painting that much and but in a way you sometimes you just need a break you just need to get out of yourself get out of um, the box and and then you start doing it again and, and you just feel so uh, at home. That's a great feeling. If you have done any creative work and you stop doing it, I think you're gonna... Most people I have talked to... And that's very nice for doing actually YouTube. I have inspired people with my YouTube. I've, Basically, also my former YouTube channel, the one I had that was hacked. That's actually had a bigger audience. But it's. I have inspired people to start painting again. And that is, that is a win. You know, like Horace Mann says, you should. Be ashamed to die until you want some victory for humanity. And uh, I think that is my, my victory. Just the fact that I give of myself. I do this for free, basically. Of course, I hope that someday YouTube can give me, or Patreon or YouTube can give me a steady income so that I can just focus basically on painting only the things I want to paint. Because I have to do sometimes some compromises uh, with my time and how I, what I paint and stuff. And it would be nice to be able to focus all my time into not taking any portraits or commissions or anything. So if, if you like my work, I would really appreciate if you became a patron. Or if you don't, can't afford that or don't want to do that, you can at least give thumbs up, leave comments and share my videos on social media. That would be really, 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 really helpful. I mean, just a thumbs up is just priceless. Okay, so please do that. 
it's really important for the algorithm and and stuff. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't take much to just smash that like button. It's nice to kind of work all over the place a little bit because if you get too much stuck in one place, you, you tend to uh, I tend to start screwing things up, and that is not good. So try to work a little bit all over the place if you can. I need some more red. See, first I put on some more light here. Okay, but it can't be like that, okay? So, what I do then is to go in and I turn it down. Now, you see underneath that shadow now, it gets some kind of texture. You can actually see that there are some brick texture. And then I go over it again, and I push it even more down. And then I go back and forth until it kind of becomes something. It's actually, I need to do something with the lightest way to... It comes down like this, so I have to do something with the lighting. I'm going to do that soon, because it's not so good. The, you have to have the lighting in your back if you're going to paint. You can't have it over like this and down like that because then it's going to kind of disturb the surface when you're painting. And I also think that, that my videos will look better if I have the light more in the background and it's not this kind of intense right over my head as it is basically right now. So that is my advice to you if you want your lighting to become better. I use fluorescent lights. I don't use any daylight when I'm painting because that is a totally different hue. And doing paintings like this, it's also not that good because it flattens out everything. The daylight kind of flattens things, and um, uh, then you can't really see the depth and stuff. So I prefer to do it this way. Okay, there's also some reddish there, behind there, and I add in some blue. As you can see, now I'm going to keep it a little bit woolly, woolly now. Uh, and then I'm going to let it dry. Because now there's thick textures here. And it's kind of, I have pencil brushwork here too. But it's way more toned down. And it doesn't have that 
thickness to it. And that is of course on purpose to create the difference in in both textures and in, in, in everything, you know. And shadow underneath here. That's also more in the red, actually. When I get up here, it's more in the red. Well, I think this onion is actually going to become quite nice. So, yeah. Okay. So annoying. Uh, just to try to... What I also do is that I... If I want it to be a little bit more light here, I just take pure white, like this. And then I just basically blend it in, wet in wet. And then I avoid the line, it just glides into it. And that's one of the things that I really was fascinated by about Mier. When you see Vermeer in real life, how he has actually gotten these, these lines just to glide into one another, just explode, but poof, there is no, you can't really see them, but you feel they are there, it's just perfect. So you have to look at the best paintings of all the old masters, and you know, not all paintings of the old masters are the best. Some are quite boring, some are not that good. I mean, maybe they weren't that inspired that day, or maybe they didn't like the motif, or maybe they didn't care. Or they just commissioned work and they did the job that I had to, to get paid. But the best Also use your fingers to flatten the curve. <laughs> flatten the curve. Okay. Too much. Well, that's how I do it. In the next segment, we'll see what I did. Just go a little closer. Yeah, I had to do something with the light because it's um, ruining everything. It's too. Okay, I think I'm gonna try to do uh, maybe the last layer today. We'll see what happens. I put on some uh, some glaze. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, some retouche vernis first. I'm gonna do a little glaze. Not not any. I'm actually gonna do it with my round pencil or something. Uh, just gonna give it a little uh, good start. To so I uh, use as usually the Kaplak and the French Ultramarine Donker this time. You can also use other colors, but try to keep them clean. I think it's a very good um, rule to keep your glazes quite clean in the colors. So you don't use a whole ball or something that is kind of a broken thing. That is my uh, opinion uh, because when you have 
in a color, you can actually mix in in other colors and bring them up and down, round and round, as I say. And you see how now. And uh, what I'm going to do today is just to try to get all the very nice um, contrasts and just strengthen the different things. It's not much I have to do in the background. I'm just gonna twink it, twink it, twink it as I say. Uh, to until the until it actually just yeah becomes finished. I spilled some medium on me now. Well, let's survive, I guess. Just drying up my hands a little bit. Now, I will also do a small place over, over that thing here because that is, there's a point of light here that I would like to enhance. You see, now I tone it down. Uh, now, this this little texture thing here is coming out. So, you take it away, do it like this, take it away that. And now this pops out because it took away the color on top. So, it pops out. I'm going to strengthen it a little bit also. Uh, just boom, and uh, it's a little bit reddish around it and uh, stuff. So that is basically what I'm gonna try to do. Bring it out. Try to bring it out. Around here. Scratch my ear a little bit. Okay. Let's see. That is a good thing about the glaze. You can just um, work. And now the, the green. Now this turns kind of yellowish gold. Type when I put in some some yellow here, uh, just and that is why I like to keep the colors I glaze with quite clean because I get this kind of zzz, I don't know the this kind of intense almost fluorescent feeling. Uh, like it's burning, it was burning. All the colors are burning. The lights are kind of popping out. You can actually feel that the light is is coming, not from, not hitting the painting, but that the light actually comes out of the painting. And that's the difference between. something I find almost like if you turned off the light it would kind of glow in the dark of course it wouldn't but that is the feeling I'm kind of after uh, I wanted to kind of just come out come out and get me come out and get you now all the textures underneath there and gives it the paintedness. If you look at, the, at Rembrandt's clothes, you see he has used these techniques very actively. And there was a guy, a Russian guy or something, that had copied uh, a few paintings along with us. Uh, was a little bit direct with him. He had copied. Um, Leonardo da Vinci, Mona Lisa, and 
people are praising that painting. Oh, it's so great. It's so... No, it isn't great. It just it looked like he had used an airbrush and didn't really understand at all what he has actually tried not to, not to copy the painter or the paintedness or the reason why this painting is a beautiful painting. You know, I mean, personally, I like uh, Rembrandt's paintings and Vermeer better than I like. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci, but I would say that Leonardo was probably the greatest artist that ever lived uh, for many reasons. But the point is that even him, if you look at the cloth and you look at, there was some some paintedness even in his paintings, despite of the culture or the painted surface is not. Uh, at the level of Rembrandt and his 3D uh, thing and of course this guy was blaming that it was old uh, that this was a new painting and and um, that the feminists made it fade and blah 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 but the point is that that was not what I was saying to him I was telling him that he actually missed all the all the paintedness. He just tried to copy the, the motif. And I told him he had to just tear it down. And really not necessarily try to copy copy the painting, but try to make it painted like Leonardo da Vinci's intention was um, if you look at draw the drawings of Leonardo da Vinci you can actually see how he has um, he makes lines and stuff he uses lines and he uses um, all the tricks in the book to create this beautiful um, almost um, you see, when he, when he, it's like here, I can't, some places here, I can actually give it some hardness. But other places, there has to be, it has to be soft. Because if not, it's not going to feel natural in the end. And that is the, that is the, the most difficult thing you can do with a painting. It is actually make it feel a little bit natural. Uh, that you actually believe that this is a real object and he missed all that and, but his rendition wasn't that bad but it was no he just haven't understood what what painting is about and I explained it to him and in the end he actually thanked me for my comment because I told him to to pay more attention to uh, the paintedness, the textures, and even the colors, and uh, instead of trying desperately to uh, copy copy it. Of course, it's if you're gonna copy a painting, it is it is like if you are kind of copying a painting or you are making a whatever you call it it is like making a portrait I would call it this is a portrait of the painting of blah 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 so I'm gonna do some myself but I'm gonna call them portraits of famous paintings it is basically like when a pianist are playing music by Beethoven or uh, Mozart or Bach or whatever, you know, Chopin, which I really love, Satie. They are basically making portraits, subjective renditions, portraits of the music. 
So they are taking art that is already made. And it's basically in music, that is what you do. It's funny because a good pianist are playing music from other musicians. Okay. But if, if a musician today basically uh, plays music, okay, it says a girl sings songs by Janis Joplin. They are just calling it, uh, what do you call it? Uh, there's a word for it, I don't really remember now. Um, what is that word? Well, you probably know what word I'm looking for. But you, they don't look at it as great art. So why do we look at it as great art when somebody is playing uh, Mozart or Beethoven? I mean, it's the same thing, isn't it? Not just that Beethoven has been dead for all over time. Yeah, that was a rant. Anyway, hope you get what I'm... A cover, cover, yeah, they call it cover. So, when a pianist are playing Beethoven, you should call it a cover. A cover of... They're playing cover of Beethoven. But they don't do that. Why? Why is that? Was it because... It, well, I guess I'm pretty sure that Beethoven was actually thinking that... Uh, other people was going to play his music and since you don't have have of course we don't have uh, any uh, music played by these people themselves because they couldn't possibly uh, record it so maybe that's the, that's the point but anyway but anyway if you're gonna copy a painting Make it your own and try to make it, try to be true to the inten intention. What was the intention of Vermeer? It was the translucent, you know, all the old things gliding over into you know, another. It was a paintedness. It was a, he drove himself mad with all these details. He never could finish a painting because it was so intense for him to actually do the paintings that he, he put it off and I can actually feel that myself many times that I love to paint I just love it it's a thing I never get tired of okay but also the thing that even this an onion just an onion an insignificant onion can drive me insane <laughs> Small things. It doesn't really matter. Back and forth, back and forth. So, this can be hard when you get into that level where you actually, when it starts to get difficult, that is when it really starts to to cost something. Now I was talking about the line. You see this line here? This line here I can have very strong. Now why? Because it has to dissolve there. Now it can only be a small part of it that has that. And then I build in the background I have to have some more light there. But then I build this up a little bit more and I basically strengthen the lines here. It's not really a line, it's more like a shadow. I think it's very much in the blue. Uh, I can see that. Now, 
it's very important. If I made a very hard line here now, it will cancel out this. These two would compete. So there is almost no line there. So I have to basically make it, almost make it disappear without making it disappear. And that's where Valmer comes in. Uh, this part is where Rembrandt comes in. Now both Rembrandt and Vermeer did both things, of course, but Vermeer, in my opinion anyway, was better on getting the lines to disappear, and Rembrandt had this intense, almost impressionist, expressionist part of him that just poured in more paint and created this physical room. And what my thinking is, if I can... And when it... Around here again, you have... Then you have um, Turner. H. William Turner. You know, the background and how to make these things, you know, come together. So, yeah, that's... Uh, that's all I think. And, um, that is why I talk about basically three painters. I talk about Vermeer, and I talk about Turner, and I talk about uh, Rembrandt. You combine them, and you try to do your best. And, of course, you have to think like Leonardo da Vinci, be a be a scientist, uh, he was, what I will say, the least pretentious guy. If you read his, uh, there are a great book with his uh, thoughts and diaries. And reading through it is just great because you, you meet a person who are a realist and who wasn't pretentious. And... Uh, saw nature and everything in a, in a realistic light and that realism you have to bring also in that realism with a realism of stoicism stoic philosophy and all these different combinations and you have to evolve your skills and my skills are hardly as good as people think they are and I know that, and a trained eye will probably know that. But people in general aren't able to see it, and of course that's a good thing for me, because if people could actually see my stuff like I see them, I guess they wouldn't even buy them. So, sometimes. Uh, or maybe I'm just not... I don't see myself in an objective sense and can't really judge my own work. That maybe it's better than I think. Maybe it's worse than I think. But it's very hard to know. So keep an open mind. Keep be open to criticizing yourself mercilessly. Or challenge yourself to become better. People who think they are very good doesn't really, first of all, they are great assholes. Second of all, they basically stop evolving. So, yeah. See now, I put in the red here to kind of explain. Mm -hmm. turn off the camera now. I think this segment has been long enough. And then I will just keep painting. And we'll just see what happens. Here too, you know, it's like
This is basically, that is the thing with the glaze. Now I just enhance the glaze. We'll put in colors here. More reddish and stuff and then that, that blue that I put in or glaze is kind of mixing with it and I can go over that again like this to get that crispy feeling and now I'm basically into what I love with with um, Vermeer these things are now just basically melting into one another to create a more natural feel to it and yeah I'm gonna do some portraits of classical paintings and I want to do Rembrandt, Vermeer, Edvard Munch, Sick Child by Edvard Munch, one of my favorites. I hated that picture actually, I thought it was really crappy the first time I saw it because I didn't have the introspection or empathy maybe or some empathy to connect with his brushwork and uh, that's basically what that guy I was talking about suffering from he, he he's uh, he he's quite good as to, to copy or, or try to copy the motif but he doesn't have the empathy to actually understand or maybe it's not that I think he's a psychopath don't get me wrong it's not the kind of empathy I'm talking about I'm talking about the empathy to to understand when you hear a piece of music and you feel you can actually hear you can understand the person who made it you can understand his irony in the music you can understand every motion every everything he his intentions almost it's, it's uh, almost because music as painting is a voice and um, or language it's a language voice now ah, it's a voice too you know language is a voice so um, and if he actually understood that hopefully you will his paintings or renditions or copies or whatever you call it would become way 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 better because then he won't care much that much about getting a perfect copy I think he did not succeed in, in any way uh, but it will become even closer without being closer yeah maybe it makes sense for you like you said anyway <sighs> yeah I'm gonna zoom a little bit you can see so yellow so sad anyway that's how it turned out I'm gonna try to finish it today maybe I need one more touch up but Okay, here we are. Uh, I am now going to try to get in the last layers. The last whoosh. I'm afraid it's going to start growing soon. And we don't want that, so I'll try to close the deal today. And then get it off to this lucky patron. Hopefully, and I'm just gonna do a glaze. I already put on the retouche vernis. I only do it blue now, to and maybe a little bit of red later. But I just do a little bit of a glaze here, and I need some reddish there. I can see. Uh, maybe I will try some cadmium red. Just see what happens. Just for fun. Uh, there's a little, you see that? 
some are red and yeah I only do the glaze in the shadows now because or, or maybe I do a little bit like this anyway so I already put on the cartouche finish as I said and uh, then I'm just gonna start painting this so like this and just scrape away a little bit and after I'm done with this I'm gonna do something with my lighting in here so I get it more uh, in the background because now it's coming straight down and it kind of screws up the process for me. So I'll try that. Maybe I even start working against that wall over there at a different angle, but I see what I do. Because also usually play music when I paint and then it's nice to have stand basically in the middle of the room and uh, paint because then I can hear the nice music and stuff. See now, I'm just going to do a little bit more here. Let's try to get that out. Well, let's see. Some kind of brushes. Yeah, I will try. Lift that up a little bit underneath. Mm -hmm. It's not that bright actually. First, I would put in some more light underneath so I see this better. Now, the color is now mixing with the glaze I put on. And like this, so we get that shape. And then I will put in some more here. It mustn't be too bright because then it will compete too much. And the nuances here are quite, they are basically almost the same. So it's not that bright, it's just like that maybe also more light on here this this process is all a, always a very grueling process it is the most difficult part the end of the painting is just amazingly consuming and difficult there's no doubt about that and now I seem to have forgotten to yeah that was nice I actually forgot I thought I had washed my pencils last time but I seem to have forgotten so they are stiffened up which also makes it a little bit more hard um, yeah. Need to follow the uh, need to follow the kind of the direction as I told as I said in an earlier segment. Uh, somebody would actually go down, but I'm trying to kind of get this rounding by. If you do like this, it will kind of just become like this. 
and it's not how it is in reality and you have to train your eyes to see these things in everything you paint actually it can be a face if you if you do i used to do a uh, long long time ago and i have this dream that someday i'm going to start doing it again i'm going to do um, sculpture i'm a dreamer i guess i also want to you know on a good day i want to learn to play the piano I want to do sculpture, I want to draw, I want to, um, I dare, that's, that's, that's a problem with a, with a more manic mind. I'm not kind of a manic, like I have long periods down, long periods up, but I have this manic mind and some days I just feel I can do bloody well anything. And then I just you know, fall into a hole. And, um, it's really rough. So yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy to live this life. Well, not always something that you have to struggle with. But fine, that is how it is. And if you can love your what you do, things can actually be quite okay. Anyway. Back to painting, as you can see, I'm trying to do this, get this rounded. And there, maybe. I was talking about this, this very bright spot. I'm going to try something. Just give it a bam. Another. It's the only part that will be white. Basically white. Uh, they say Rembrandt used black but he only used the absolute black in the pupils or the eyes of the person he was painting to get that extreme depth i don't know if it's true but this might be true And the same with the white, you have to be careful because the white is not light. What gives you the light is the color, uh, the, the con contrasts. So you put in too much, it dies. And uh, it's really not that, really difficult to know exactly when to stop. So, yeah, I'm going to try to utilize that, or use that um, glaze I put on, get some, because light are thrown from here into there, so I'll try to get this kind of sparkle up. You see that I'm going to strengthen this light also a little bit so you can actually see basically and I have to keep it down there mustn't be any texture there there mustn't be any thickness because that will compete with the rest of the painting so yeah Touch the now and more here. Uh, that's bright enough, I think. And shadow and there's the bright light there. 
like this. And I want to tone that down a little bit. And then I use the blue and the cup lock to tone it down. This is kind of a micro, I call it micro glazing. It's like a glaze without. I'm just toning now with very, very. The colors are really thin. I have no idea how people who actually fix paintings can see the difference between a glaze like this and dirt. I have no idea. See, and there we have that effect that you see in the night watch. We have that shadow that hits, and yeah. Now, if I now I think I have to tone it down a little bit more, it's actually a little bit more in the red. So, I use different. Uh, Different yellows and different reds. I use Vermilion and I use Kaplak or Alizarin as it's called. And I use Cadmium Red and I use uh, Cadmium orange, orange and I use Cadmium uh, Yellow Deep and I use Cadmium Yellow and then I use the primary color, uh, the totally blue, no, I mean, sorry, uh, yellow, and then I use, uh, what's it called, Naples Scabble uh, something. <coughs> so I use different colors together to tone, tone the canvas, tone, not tone the, and everything. It's, I used to, when I was younger, or young, maybe I should say young now, younger, I'm not really young anymore, I'm kind of getting 53 in a couple of weeks. So, I used to use only the primary colors and whites, and I had to mix all the other colors. I guess I had two blue colors. I had, uh, I do have, have the uh, French ultramarine and the cobalt blue, the primary color. But I didn't have any broken colors. And I was a fanatic about it, so... But then again, instead of having to uh, stand around and mix every single color, it can actually be a good idea to have some that is already mixed, so you don't have to go too many U-turns before you get to the point. There's a little bit of light on this one, and this one, it's kind of that crispy thing that you find on the onions. As you can see, I'm not a photorealist, I'm more like a painter's painter. And that's fine by me. So, and okay, so with a little bit of blue again, French ultramarine here to enhance this. Now this is just a thin glaze. You see now how it works. Kind of just comes over the other colors and. Try to 
make it kind of glide into that part. And there, a new one there. And these things are really difficult. And it takes basically a few years to learn it. And you will never finish. Just keep on banging on, as I do. Every single onion, every time it's the same problems. So that is how it is to be a painter. This one is actually way more so I had actually done it a little bit too too hard. All these over paints over over and over gives it uh both painted and very lively surface. So, and actually, that is, people tell me that I like that about my paintings that they are very much alive and stuff, and uh, that is great. People like them for the right reasons and uh, yeah. now I'm going to put in some yellow some some um, the lemon here and since I have a glaze from before in blue this now turns into a very transparent greenish and uh, Lightens it up a little bit, kind of gives it a complementary contrast. Like this, some cadmium to light it up a little bit more. And voila. Well, this is called micro glazing. I figured that out myself. This is not too hard, so I also have to enhance that according to what I'm looking at. But it also is going to be in shadow. Just have to find the right hue to it. Have to find it kind of the, the mix between. It can't be like this, but it can't be this dark either. So I just have to go a little bit back and forth here. Forth. Maybe I should actually tone this down, and um, maybe bring some of it over into this. And that seemed to work out. You see now I'm blending the colors on the surface. And this is just now a kind of an elusive thing. And I will enhance it a little bit with putting in some here. And there. So basically gets a little bit of presence. This and bring in some calcium deep and put in here. See what I'm doing now. Now all the textures that are underneath, all the work I did before, is now underneath here and gives it a texture. So I just have to use the colors. So, here it is, I have been working 
with it for a while. Actually, it was an abrupt uh, stop when last time because suddenly I was actually out of um, out of uh, data on the card. You can see it now, and I'm just going to do a few small adjustments. There's a light here, and. Uh, very, very not so bright right here. And do like that. I use my finger to keep it down. To keep it down. So Give that a little bit more shape and also goes up here. Like this. You see I'm working around in the background and stuff and putting in textures. I'm going to show you that in the end of this video how I'm working with that. Right now I'm just trying to basically finish it. That's hard enough in itself. Have to tone everything to the right place. Because my brain is always tricking me to believing that there are more colors. And <clears throat> so typical me. Such a hard time keeping it down. My brain clearly exaggerates everything. Also colors. So I really have to focus on basically not going too far. Also, I can't really see what's happening there, so what I'm going to do is just make these two nuances just melt. Ah, oh, that was the wrong color. I need more yellow. Lemon. Because that was way too red. I want these two things to melt together, basically. Just disappear. No, that was more. You see that red that came there <coughs> became a little bit of a problem. You might ask why? Why would I bother this much with a with a single onion? Well, that's the whole thing. If I stopped trying, if I stopped trying to go beyond my own abilities, I would just quit doing it. If you are the kind of artist who has found your brand, as they say, and you just do the same thing over and over and over, which of course I do too, but you especially if you find a very simple way to to make it happen and you don't push your paintedness any further i think you you will over time be in deep trouble because the motivation to paint needs to come from the thing the pain or the the thing that you want to want to push yourself beyond to a higher level. This now starts to remind me a little bit of that dress in the painting The Jewish Bride. A painting I actually copied many many years ago into a, into a composition I made of a girl 
and then Lina, a big painting, and uh, she sadly died of cancer. She died from melanoma cancer, 27 years old. Such a sad thing, really. And I actually have a big painting of her that is unfinished, huge one. That was actually going to be about death. And I'm starting to wonder, maybe I should actually finish it as a tribute to her. It's 2 meters point to 40. So it's a huge painting. And I might do that. So sad. She was such a sweet girl too. Red hair. And I, I remember I told her, don't sunbath so much. Getting cancer or something. She only turned red like a lobster. She never got any color really. And then she got cancer. And she died. And uh, such a, she was an artist. So yeah. I think I want to, I have some very nice uh, portraits I took of her. I think I want to paint some portraits of her. And, uh, yeah. It's a tribute. I know she has a sister. Maybe I could give it to her sister or family. That would be something. I think she would like that because the painting I made of her, the Rembrandt, that was in the beginning when I was painting and I couldn't really give it that, shall we say, I couldn't give it that, um, uh, paintedness or whatever that I can now. So, I'm starting to, to, something is starting to happen with this painting also. And I do think that I'm kind of getting somewhere. And, uh, yeah. I take such pleasure in getting things done. It's just it's so strange because every day, every day, I have great struggles getting started. It's almost like I'm walking around like a wolf, around its prey, trying to get started, multitasking. What is it called? Um, there's a name for it when you pro pro procrastinate. <laughs> to the I procrastinate to the to insanity. It's unbelievable, and I should just go straight from. Well, it's nice to get out and go for a walk or something. Before you start, to get some air. Especially in summertime. Maybe even more important in winter time. But then go straight to the painting and challenge your demons because this that is what it is. It's they are all my my demons, I call them. They are every single painting feels like they are trying to kill me. And even this one, who is just an onion. One of many, many onions I've been painting for almost 30 years. I want to show you one of the first onions when I'm home this summer I'm going to ask my parents I'm going to do a video from my home Iceland studio 
I'm going to show you all my all my works from I started out as a young young and excited art student want to be a painter and was totally in love with painting which I still have of course but in a different naive way which I cannot miss because as life goes on you become more and more conscious of your own limitations and you have regrets and you have so many things to deal with and, and you just have to pick yourself up and do the best we can with the time we have. I'm becoming 53. Christopher Hitchens died of esophageal cancer when he was 62, was it? 62 or 63. And uh, there's no guarantees that I will become an old man and get some of it done. Maybe, um, maybe that is what I should do. I should pretend that I'm going to die soon, which is in many ways are true. And kind of clean up my room. Yeah. House cleaning. Finish all, all things that aren't finished, as if I'm going to die in a few months. That is a good way to think about it. Because you never know. Maybe I will be dead soon. You know, being dead isn't a problem, you know, as George Garland said. The problem isn't being dead. The problem is getting dead. And that's true. I've been uh, listening to a lot to the Stoics, like Marcus Aurelius and all these, and say that all the time, you know, memento mori. Remember you will die. And... Uh, Marcus Aurelius died now 2,000 years ago and he left his mark on the planet, especially in his meditations and uh, yeah and he was always ready to die Memento Mori that is exactly what I have to do. I have to act like there that I will be gone soon. And that way I should get things done. So, yeah. Sorry to bang on on this death, death thing. But I think it's very important if you if you if you're a person, if you're an artist or a person who would like to start painting or whatever, that you actually think about this and don't take time for granted. I did for too many years. And I saw day after day, year after little year, slip away into nothing. And today I regret many things. I told my mother the other day, it's strange that I managed to do something at all actually because I've been so distracted and stuff. So, yeah. I think the best thing is to have a schedule that you stick with. That's very hard for me. It's maybe one of the most difficult things I can do is to have a, get a schedule. Because there's something in me that always breaks it. It's very frustrating. So, yeah. Let me 
See now, I'm going to tone down this a bit because that's taking too much attention. Yeah. And these two are just basically gliding into one another. Easy to see. It's kind of blue, green here. And we have this one. Okay. Anyway, you see what I'm doing, I am just going back and forth here now and trying to find that sweet spot. And it is actually basically a never ending story. I can bang on with this for days. Uh, it's almost like a, you can't empty out all the things you could do better all the things that aren't round enough or colors I feel that doesn't really match up to one another or uh, suddenly I do too much and then I lose it and then I have to find it again and, and it is it's basically a nightmare to be honest now I've been touching this a lot so let's mess that up I have to go in and this up a little bit. Of course, the wrong pencil. It's better to use this one, I think. Maybe a flat one. Hmm. Yeah, I think a flat one is more like it, right there. So I think this is going to be. Basically, the last segments. I'm going to do some more painting and then I will sign it. And uh, give it away to one of my patrons. Patrons. Patrons! to be a little bit more light there and maybe behind there find another right hue like this that strengthen I can strengthen that shape over here now. Now it's kind of reddish over there. It's not really where it's going to be, but almost I need a little bit more happening over there. I'll also turn it down a bit. Just go over it like this. And like this. Like this. 
see those nuances now. It's really difficult. That is kind of the thing that grabs me inside. The challenge. And maybe that is also why I procrastinate so much because it is quite difficult and it's painful when you come to this point. Because it's, it's, you need such a silence and focus and kind of the body is resisting it because it can it knows how great the feeling is when you paint when you get into that deep 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 flow but also the body also recognize probably subconsciously the pain and uh, it's very natural for the body to try to try to avoid pain and it's not as I said it's not that you don't want to do it it's not that I don't love it it's just trying to avoid pain we are as human beings as human apes or whatever you believe we are now, for me, we are basically apes, and uh, uh, we bear the stamp of low origins, as I think it was Darwin who said that. And that is why we procrastinate all the time, we try to avoid confrontation with pain. And deep concentration is bliss but also pain okay I've repeated that many times now I think that is the psychology behind it when when because painting like this is basically going to the to having a having um exam every day now if you're if you're a modernist you're uh, modern impressionist or expressionist you do not have to go this deep into detail you don't have to be confronted because everything is more relative and you can't really say what's good or what's bad which leaves you with a much bigger freedom to just be in that easy sketch like flow which is great you know but when you go into detail that is where you meet all your mistakes and stuff so okay i hope that helps and uh just keep painting and in the end it becomes better you see I'm kind of getting somewhere mm -hmm. so see you when I sign it okay here we are I hope this is the last uh, the last one the thing is that I was actually going to do the last one, but then I just kept on working and it basically took on its own life as usual and I uh, came to a point where I just had to say, okay, uh, I need to do another glaze just a very controlled glaze I have put on my retouche vernis retouche oui oui uh, <coughs> so I'm gonna put on a little bit of glaze just a tiny bit and then I want to do the last 
the last, uh, the last, um, you know, the last touch up. So the thing is, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have first some of these and I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna just use my country Kamalin as usual. Uh, it's quite frustrating because I I think that I am getting somewhere. Now I'm gonna put this, this is this is French ultramarine. So I put this into the shadows, the shadow parts here. Uh, I want that to be in the deeper blue. Now where is it more reddish? Well it's more reddish over here. So what do I do? I take some uh, Actually, something I usually don't do. I'm going to take some cadmium red and I'm just going to glaze over it a little bit here. Behind here, I need some underneath. Underneath, I need a more bluish glaze. I'm going to enhance that later. So, these two things will actually then. Uh, stick a little bit together and uh, yeah I'm going to take away some too so that's fine the shadow parts I'm trying to get this to get more of that round shape now so what do I do in the background well I do exactly the same I use the blue and I go over it like this and uh, uh, get more so I'm going to do like this and this I'm going to push back up again but first I'm going to push it down like this uh, now you can see it comes more out here too and, uh, especially over here because, or it doesn't really matter you know where push this down too. Now I don't have no idea how the conserve the people who conserve old paintings can see the difference between glazes like this and and uh, the finished painting or the finish or the colors. I have no idea. But I mean yeah. So now I put on the retouche vernis first. So this will then kind of pull into to that. Then I will just start to scrape a little bit. Uh, some more light underneath here. There's some light here. I'm going to use this one. So now you see I'm starting to remove some of the glaze but only in the places that I want to enhance like here uh, here and because there's a lot of uh, colors underneath it's a lot of yellowish and stuff and instead of adding more color now I can actually can I pull it out from underneath? And that's a good way to do it. And then I see I get more of that round thing. Now this line became way too strong, so I just do a cross over and to dampen that line there. This is supposed to be that strong. So I just turn it with the glazing. Now we've got more dissolved. And I can also go in here and pull out some more. And do the same behind there. Uh, yeah. I'll try to get some more here. 
looks quite brutal and it is quite brutal but it's necessary so yeah just cross over so we can actually feel that there's something underneath and um, yeah That is also a problem with me because I'm, I'm always putting things into departments in a way in my head. So if I look at some point like this one, I forget to look at the, the high point and I might paint this one a little bit too strong, a little bit too bright and uh, then I start to lose that shape. So there is a there is a conscious there's a subconscious and a conscious way to paint. You have to basically sometimes take a step back from your bias, as is I say, we'll say call it, and try to see the painting in a more objective light. So you are able to um, see it more in an objective way. It's not easy, especially when you're neurotic like me. But You see now the glaze, you can actually use the glaze to kind of create a better. Now there are right here, it is too flat, and that annoys me to put it mildly. And I will try to get this to come out a little bit more without this competing with the highlight. And that is also not easy. So I'm just give it a more that highlight there. And like this. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. I want to try to round it a little bit. You know, the more it comes to the brightest parts, the more cleaner the color. And uh, yeah, of course, all the colors are clean. That's not what I mean. Um, bright. I, th I think bright is more, more, more primary. The, the closer you get to the light, the more primary the colors are. That is basically, I think that was the word I was looking for. It's still warm because I have the warm light on. Uh, let's see what happens here. I need to find that sweet spot. It has to be around. Now there's also 
brighter light there. So this is, if you go close to it, I'm going to show you after this, when I'm done, how it's kind of a layer upon layer upon layer. And even, you know, just have to work with it until it kind of comes out to get you. I want my paintings to come out to get me or get you. I want them to have make uh, extreme uh, sculptural dimension. I see now there's a stripe going down there, which is very subtle. And it has this light going beside it. It's really difficult, believe me. It's not easy. Finger, gee. You see now I toned it like that. Then I have to pull it up. Gee, it's got a cramp in my finger. Cadmium orange glaze, and I'm going to do a cadmium orange glaze here as well. I'm going to touch it up. That's a cadmium yellow. Donker, I think it's called. I mix it with a cadmium yellow, orange. Then I get this mid tone. Of course, this is too bright, so I'll tone it down with some. Then I mix some uh, of the blue into it. And I get the shadow color or the tartier color that is the actual shadow color. That is how nature makes it. You mix these things together. You have no idea how difficult this is. It is really, really difficult. Because there is so, the margins are just so small between too much and too little. And there are people who told me they don't even know, understand why I bother, because usually can't, people can't see it anyway. But I can see it, and that's enough for me. That is what matters. That I see it, and I am not in this for the money. 
a minute for the for getting it right. That is that is basically the only way I paint. I think my motivation is as with everything else I do in life, good or bad, also some driving force that just I want I want things to work. I want things to I want get things done. I want to make things work. And um, I just don't have any way of motivating me to paint or do anything. I think it's a positive form of vanity. Get it? Now I'm going to try to use the opposite. I used a glaze, make a shadow. To make that onion thing. It's a little bit too much chaos here. It's easier for me to drag it up. Now it's a little bit more light here. Yeah, that was too much. And there's some light here. So now I have to tone it down again. Sure, it's more the red, so I'm gonna use my yeah. This is more, a bit more like it. Okay, is it with my fingers today? They cramp up. Oh, I was training yesterday, I was boxing a lot, so maybe that's why. Actually, I didn't forget that. Okay. Anyway, I think you get the point, hopefully. If you don't get it by now, you're never going to get it, I think. Um, okay. Now I want to turn off the camera. And I'm going to paint for a few hours. Hopefully. 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 I will be able to get this done tonight and um, call it. Oh, it's blue and orange, blue and orange, blue and orange, red and green, yellow. You know, it's it's a complementary circus. A circus of complementary colors. And you get the white underneath. Shine through. 
Okay. Tiny bit of light before I close out, and it's not much. Because it's a wider air. And a little bit here to pull it, pull that shape a bit. But it's such a it's such a subtle thing because if I compare it to the white spot, it's almost it's almost it's almost nothing. Almost nothing. So yeah. Oh, so difficult. You have no idea. Because it's so subtle. Oh. Anyway, I just have to give it my all. Was like this. That spot now kind of died. It might be because I put too much white around it as I worn against all the time. That can happen. So I'm just gonna try to get it back up again. Yeah, I need to do something with this lightning too because it's too, too, way too hard. Anyway, see you later. Okay, here we are. Uh, I'm just gonna do a slight little touch up, and uh, I think I'm done. Basically, I'm pretty pleased with it, and. Uh, 
will now also have a frame on, which I'm going to show you after this. Uh, it's really nice, and I'm going to do a more focused small glaze, just with uh, nothing much. Uh, I'm going to use some jewelry, some of my medium, and I'm just going to use some blue to give it a kind of down here. It is more in the blue. Uh, or green, so when I actually do this over the yellowish, it becomes, of course, more in the green and more in the shadow tones. And that is a, one of the ways you can actually uh, you can actually um, go from warm to cold. It's a very effective way to do it. Uh, when you have all this yellow and reddish here, there will automatically be more bluish or in the in the uh, greenish tones on that side, which is in the shadows. And yeah, uh -huh. I have done a little bit of a uh, tone. I'm gonna see if I can. Just give it a little bit of a. I want to give that a little bit of a. <laughs> it's hard to say. I just wanted to have a little bit more zest. A little bit more uh, tone, maybe. Uh, yeah. There is a shadow going down there. Now, I don't want this to become another 10 hour thing because it's so easy for me to get out of control. I want this to be 5 minutes, not 10 hours. Now, here I'm using a thin layer of that's also a glaze, just a thin layer of um, uh, cadmium deep. And, um, and then I can kind of do the opposite on the other side. I up it a little bit with the color. And as I go deeper down, I can go over to cadmium orange. And with a thin glazer there. These are the things I saw when I saw, uh, saw uh, Valmier's paintings. Uh, he has done some very, very thin glazes that melts into the melts in like almost like um, not almost but like aquarelle. It's almost the same as I should have used watercolor. Uh, gives the same uh, the same feeling. Very transparent, and yeah, that is the deep. This is cadmium yellow. This one is cadmium. And you see now that it gets a little bit more light. To use my fingers, and I, I curved it a little bit more. Now there is. Also something here that I want to do. I think it wants a little bit of white, and uh, I want to mix that in with a yellow, or maybe just do some brighter on top. Uh, cadmium. Cadmium deep, actually. So I'm kind of going back and forth with those colors. I will need a highlight there with some yellowish in it. There, you see, jumps out. And I need a little bit of a highlight right there. 
that's now how I shape the last things. The highlight there can't be as high as this because then they will compete and you don't want that. So I just do try to control it. See now. Maybe that was it. Maybe, maybe. <clears throat> okay. A little bit brighter. It's a lot of noise. I think it's the trash people coming to pick it up. It's morning. What was morning? <laughs> I'm such a night person. So a little bit more red. So now it almost touches this. I can't even see. To link that even more together, I will mix in a little bit of that color there. So they almost come to a point where they are the same, but there's a little tiny difference, and it just vanishes there. And the eyes will probably kind of make the difference or we'll put it together like this. Very, you see how fluid this is. Yeah, mm. uh. yeah. <sighs> not exactly what I wanted, but it was almost what I wanted. So I just do a little bit of a Something like that. Some blue. Yeah, there. Now, I think that was it. You know, this, you can keep on doing things like this basically or infinitely because there are always another point, another thing that can enhance something and in the end kind of start to compete with one another and suddenly and that is why if I, if I could get no I wouldn't do that actually uh, it is very time consuming to say the least and you do not really get paid for the job you do there are a few artists in the world that gets paid too much for what they do but I do not get paid for the work I put in in any way shape or form uh, but it has never been about money for me. If I I haven't even made prints, and I could have so much great material. I also have a lot of photo, great photo, 
that I never used that artistically. It's almost like I am uh, hell-bent on making my own life more difficult. And it's maybe a little stupid. Maybe. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Anyway. Okay, I need some more reddish there. But it's so, you know, it is... What is quite difficult is the thing that when I when I see, as I said before in this in this video, when I see something that I that sticks out, I tend to paint it too strong. It's like so it starts competing with the rest of the things, and that can be very annoying. Uh, because I'm kind of, I'm not seeing the whole thing all the time, in a way. Uh, I see it in compartments, maybe it's how my brain works. And my brain is also a little bit manic. Not a little bit, a lot actually. And, uh, yeah. I'm going to take this a little bit more up. That is actually underneath. And it kind of comes out in more bright yellow ish. So, and here. And I think I'm gonna, maybe I'm gonna try to leave it at this, just sign it and uh, give it away on my Patreon to one of my right supporters. Hopefully one of the ones who are still the patrons <laughs> it doesn't matter actually if you pay in you will get your painting no matter if you because i'm kind of out of whack i'm not actually in zinc with my giveaways because of many different reasons but i will catch up and everybody will get their thing I build out so thick there, I can actually see it from the side. So, yeah. I think this gave it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more roundness. I think that will be fine. Yes. A little bit of a touch here too. Uh, 
then I think I would say voila, voila. I think I'm done. It's not a hundred percent, but it is quite good. Actually, I was pleased with. There's a lot of shape and a lot of. Yeah, see here. I do think this should be more bluish and like this. Oh, that part is so difficult. I see beyond, I think I see beyond what normal people do see. So to me things that are, would be almost impossible to see for other people, it's so clear to me. And it can be quite devastating. Yeah, that's a nice shadow, I think. Yeah, that's okay. We scrape out a little bit of... Scrape in some... Scrape in some... Um, tone down this a little bit. underneath I mean sorry. and it gives it kind of a little bit of a more gliding transparency Now I'm going into that danger zone. My fucking neighbor is starting to make noise. That's really annoying. It's going to kill me with that shit. Okay, see there's a light shining through. with this hopefully 
You know, this is the manicness kicking in. There is always something. And I always want everything in. I don't want to leave anything out. It's so annoying. That is why, as I say, every single object can become this eternity thing. So, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have a right here. You have that, that no, not the Valmir thing, but the thing that Leonardo does in his drawings is strengthening just a small piece of it and it gets that shape in his drawings not so much in his paintings actually and that is probably because of the tools they had when it came to painting I don't know maybe or the traditions they were painting in. Rembrandt was a more freer painter, I think. Uh, totally different. So, let's tone this down. And, kind of want that to out a little bit more. I'm gonna try to bring it out like this. All of these layers now are very thin. It is as thin as it comes. And also underneath here. I think it's kind of. <sighs> Maybe. No, it is very much in, in the dark. When I squint, or is it squint? It's called my eyes, it is basically down like this. I don't know why I keep on trying to get it up. Do like this. Yeah, maybe that was one of the most amazing. Mm -hmm. and a tiny piece of light here and okay that's enough I think now it is tempting to sign it like yeah I'm gonna just gonna sign it K I V because on these small paintings I don't want the the the, the signing to take take too much space or take too much noise so I'm just gonna sign it with my initials in a good way. So I'm going to sign it with my handwriting. No, not there. That's wrong. But I do it like this. It's tiny. I'm going to do tiny, tiny, tiny. Okay. Okay. 
on A, on V, on 21. Yay! I think that was good. It's not that tiny. It could be tinier. But anyway. So, I think this is good. As good as it's going to get. I'm going to focus a little bit. I'm going to show you the painting afterwards with. Yeah, you can see all the textures. Everything. I'm going to show you the painting anyway. Okay. Okay, I guess you stuck with this to the end. I hope you learned something from this and I hope that you enjoyed the ride. It was a long video and uh, maybe you picked up some tips on how you can actually go about to uh, make this happen. As you can see all the textures and everything, it's quite it's very yellow. It's, it's kind of yellow in real life too, but it becomes a little bit more yellow. I think I'm going to have to remove some yellowish things in my studio. Uh, some fluorescent lights, less yellow. Uh, yeah, so this is how it turned out. And uh, as usual, it is the Rembrandt-ish thing I'm going for. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, I hope that you put your notification bells on, uh, leave a comment, tell me what you think. And please, uh, if you wanna, want me to make some concrete videos that would be helpful for you, you can actually uh, tell me in, in description and, uh, or in comments. And uh, I will evaluate that and maybe even do it. And if you really want me to engage with you, become a patron, as I said in the beginning. So with this, I hope to see you in the next video. Remember, comment, share, and give a thumbs up. And with this, I rest.